here's what's happening. The awesome tunes are waiting for you. A whole lot of fun and exciting surprises like secret characters. It's all starting, so get it together. I like to think about things, and dissect things, and analyze things, and make bad puns about things. It's probably why I do what I do. And as such, I often have these theories about things. I have a lot of theories about the gaming industry's enthusiastic jump into 3D. One of which being, most games tied to technical advancements will inherently have expiration dates. Which is to say, most PlayStation and N64 games just haven't aged well. Maybe if I'd reviewed it in 1996, things would have been different. Maybe I would have been more excited about Motor Tune Grand Prix. But now that the novelty of polygons has worn off, and now that these games are left to stand on their own, you see the results of that novelty, and the obsession we had with it. That being, a lot of games that just don't play well. Wonder Clock! Motor Tune Grand Prix was a popular racing series on the PlayStation. People really liked this game, and you know, why not? It was a cool idea. And hey, how about those graphics, right? And plus, it, it helped fill a role on Sony's system that Mario's go-karts firmly held on Nintendo's. But it's interesting that when you read the old reviews, you see people talk about how great this game plays, and how tight the controls are. And I just have to wonder, like, were they playing a different game? Or were we also enamored by these 3D games that we lost our barometer for good games? Dynamite! Well, listen, don't get the wrong idea. I'm not saying Motor Tune Grand Prix is bad. It's a characteristically cartoony mascot racer with a bunch of characters who aren't really mascots. There's Captain Rock, who may or may not be cooking. There's a couple characters called Raptor and Raptor, because I guess they're clever girls. There's Princess Jean, who... <laughs> ...who isn't wearing jeans. So I guess, like, these are supposed to be cartoon characters, right? And this is supposed to be, like, a cartoon Grand Prix. Again, a cool idea. You know, Motor Tune really seems like it's trying to borrow from Roger Rabbit, which is never a bad idea. The cars look like Benny the Cab. There's hot cartoon chicks. Only, you know, instead of groundbreaking animation, you get uh, crappy 3D graphics. Oh, try again, baby. I know, I know, probably not fair to call them crappy, but it makes my point about the problem some of these early 3D games face when played today. They, they look bad. So bad they could be tough to play. But, to the game's credit, there's actually some interesting track design here, for its five tracks. And to be fair, on the 1996 grade scale, the game's actually doing some pretty cool things visually. It's really colorful, and the terrain's actually pretty complex. It's just that... You know, it's tough to be impressed by a game like this. Not by its graphics, at least. And where retro games shine, and all games for that matter, is the gameplay. If they play great, it doesn't matter how outdated they look. Motor Tune Grand Prix doesn't play terribly, but it doesn't play great either. I and mean, when your biggest hook was how cool you looked, old age can be rough. And in that respect, I feel for Motor Tune Grand Prix. Solid PlayStation racer that's feeling substantially less solid these days because it has osteoporosis. Thanks to our friend Ben from Buffalo, New York for sending it in. Alright! I did it! Cool! Oh, congratulations! My man!